Thanks for joining us this morning in that Christmas hymn sing. I am going to be reading this morning from Matthew. I read last night from the Gospel of Luke, the Christmas story, and so I want to read today from Matthew chapter 1, the birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he didn't have relations with her until she gave birth to a son, and Joseph called him Jesus. Well, this morning I'm reflecting on my own family and my own life just a little bit. This Bible over here for just a second. There we go. Did anyone wake up this morning in kind of a little bit of a mess in your house? Maybe just a little bit of a mess going on. Trash cans full. Dishes gathered from the meal with families and friends and snow tracked in or ice and stuff, salt maybe tracked in the house. Maybe some paw prints along the way. We've got three dogs. It's a constant battle with the paw prints. In fact, there's a rug that's outside my door that says home is not a home without paw prints. So we have plenty. I share one of my uh, Christmas, I'll, sh- I'll share with you one of my Christmas purchases though that was a total waste. Anybody ever done that? Pick something and you thought, I'm going to need this because winter's coming, I'm going to need this or whatever. And so I bought my dog some of those dog shoes for winter. Yeah. It was a total waste purchase. Um, I put my, I put the dog shoes on Tavi, our puppy, um, to go out into the snow, and she did the high kick, you know, the whole, if you've never seen a dog put on shoes, have shoes on for the first time, it is hysterical. And um, then I put them back, I took them off, well, that's not going to work on her, so then um, I put them on Penny, our, our youngest dog, our, our littlest dog, and yeah, she didn't walk, she just stood still. Uh, You know, it is funny. I tried to prepare them for winter, and, you know, they just weren't going to have anything of it. Joe said, I hope you didn't pay a lot for those. No, I didn't. Over the last few weeks leading up to Christmas, we've been in this season called Advent, a time of preparation, a preparation for this very day where we celebrate the birth of Christ. And for those of us who did not grow up in a church and celebrate this season, it's this time of waiting. So we've been in this time of waiting up until this point. And last night we celebrated the coming of Christ into our hearts and lives once again with the raising of the candles and silent night. It is one of my favorite experiences each and every year as I look from this vantage point out into the crowd with their candles raised high, singing silent night. Last night we realized the hope found in the words of the prophet Isaiah when he said, Therefore the Lord will give you a sign. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. We heard that in Joseph's story of Jesus coming into his life, God with us. Pastor Deb loves to share a story that's one of her favorite stories of one of the, the, her favorite theologians actually tells this story. And I think that's why her favorite Christmas hymn is Joy to the World. That's why I wanted us to sing it right before we began today. 
He was, the theologian was six or seven years old at home with his mother in the days around Christmas, and as he sang the familiar song, Joy to the World, he sang the second line, The Lord Has Come. Now, what what does the line say? The Lord is come, right? The Lord is come. And his mother gently corrected him, saying, no, the words aren't the Lord has come. The words are the Lord is come. And at the time, he was puzzled about what that meant. He, surely he thought Christmas was a long, about Jesus coming into the world a long time ago. Indeed, two, over 2,000 years ago, he has come. And years later, he said he realized that his mother and the words of the hymn are so very true. Christmas is about the coming and the present of the Lord who has come long ago in the past. In fact, Jesus comes again each and every Christmas in the hearts of those who proclaim him as our Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords. But he is come. Each and every moment we think about Christ in our life, he is come. Christmas Day is the trifecta, a time of celebration of the past, the present, and still yet the future when Jesus comes again in glory. In fact, this morning we find ourselves living right in the middle of the mess, sort of like my house this morning. We celebrate the past and the present and yet continue to live in the anticipation and waiting for Christ's return in the future. But that's what life's like, isn't it? All of us live somewhere between birth and resurrection. We live in the already but the not yet fullness of God. And God came to us, Emmanuel, God with us, to show us how to live life here and now right in the mess. In fact, the gospel writer Luke makes that very evident in the Christmas story. If you thought your house was a mess this morning, just think about the mess Mary and Joseph were dealing with. The scriptures say Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem in order to be registered. And it was close to the time she would give birth. Now, why they're going to Bethlehem? Because Joseph's family is from Bethlehem. And so, therefore, he has to travel close to 80 miles with Mary pregnant, nine months pregnant. All you ladies out there, can you imagine riding a donkey nine months pregnant for 80 miles? No wonder she gave birth to the child the minute they got into Bethlehem. I mean, it had to have been miserable. And when they arrived, the writer makes it clear that the town was full and there was no room for them in the inn or the guest room. We can probably assume that Joseph had asked if he could stay with some distant relatives who were there. And there was no more room since all of the families were coming into Bethlehem to be registered. And we can't not fully appreciate the message of Luke unless we first understand what the configuration of a Palestinian home in Bethlehem would have been like in the time of Jesus. In those days, a a peasant's home was simple, a one-room shelter, Sometimes even in a cave, when you go to Bethlehem today, it's the church that was built in the place that Jesus was born was a cave. And a man and his wife, their family, and all of their belongings were concentrated in this one main room. And if the owner had, of the house had sufficient resources, then he would build a small guest room. So it was not uncommon for travelers to be offered a couple's guest room or inn, as the scriptures say. But here in the scriptures, we hear that there was no place for them in the guest room, no place for them in the inn, no place for them to stay. And here Mary is about to give birth to a child. In the cold of the winter, it was also not uncommon for Palestinian families to bring into their house, get this, all of their livestock. They brought them all in with them. This provided shelter for the animals and maybe even a little bit more body heat. Um, Last, yesterday at 3 o'clock, we had all the animals inside. 
because it was so cold outside. We'd made a little shelter, a little place there at the corner of the multipurpose room. There was some hay laid out, and we had all of the small animals. Pastor Deb won her battle. There was no camel in the multipurpose room. Uh, We had a small little donkey and some goats, and um, the kids were delighted. And there were some smells that kind of went along with the animals who were gathered there in the corner of our multipurpose room. And what I did find endearing, though, and you will love this part, when all the children began to sing, the donkey would go off in his hee-haw, hee-haw. Every single time the kids started singing and uh, he started braying and the, the handler was going shh to the donkey and he just continued to sing with the children. So here, here's this Palestinian home bringing all the family indoors, bringing all of the animals indoors. You know, the family lived right in the middle of the mess. And here is where Mary gives birth to the baby Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Luke wanted his readers to hear something very special in this. He wanted his words to convey the notion that Jesus, the Son of God, was born not off in the guest room, not off in the place that people made ready for guests, but right in the middle of the mess and the smells and the messiness of life, in the midst of anxious onlookers and the tenderness of a loving family circle. Christ shows us from the very beginning of his life here on earth that he understands what it means to live in the mess. He came in this way to show us hope in the midst of despair. He came in this way to show us that there is joy in the midst of sorrow. He came in this way to show us that there's peace in the midst of conflict. He came in this way to show us that there is love in the midst of brokenness. You know, if you think about it, each one of these things I've mentioned, the peace and the conflict, the love and the brokenness, we have to look for those things, don't we? We have to watch for the ways that we can experience joy in the midst of pain or the way that we can experience hope in the midst of despair. Jesus came to us fully human, fully divine, to show us that we are his children and that this love is offered to us. He came to show us that there is light in the darkness and the darkness cannot extinguish the light. Jesus came to show us that our life can be different if we open our eyes to see it with God now, not just in the way maybe it was in the past or not in the way it is in the future, but right now. God shows us his love. That is the power of Christmas. God shows up in the mess of life and takes on the limitations of the human existence. God shows up in this babe, Bethlehem, the word made flesh, so we might know the unconditional and extravagant love of Jesus Christ. There is a reason why the Lord came in human flesh, why he came as the heavenly son of an earthly mother. God in Christ came to be one of us so that we might know that he understands the mess of this life and that in him grace can be ours. He offers us salvation. It's this present all wrapped up. All we have to do is open it and be thankful Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, that when we are lost, he will guide us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, that our nourishment is found in him. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He shines forth in the light and darkness. And after, after all, everything looks different, right? In the light. Now, I'm not a musician. We've made that very clear this morning. But I am told that if you have two in-tune pianos in the same room and a note is struck 
on one, that same note will gently respond on the other, even though it is not touched by the other person's hand. Is that true, Bonnie? Yeah. She's shaking her head yes. I understand that in music they call this sympathetic resonance. Am I saying that right? Okay. They're, they're shaking their head yes. Sympathetic resonance. So, you know, none of that orchestra was here to see if I was wrong. So if I was wrong, these two are the only one who knew it. And I was going to swear them to secrecy. When Jesus Christ came in his humanity... He was like us in every way except that he had no sin. When a chord is struck in the weakness of our heart, it resonates in his heart. There is no note of grief, sorrow, heartache, pain, or suffering that can be struck on the instrument of our life that does not resound in him as well. Just think about that for a second. That's why there is joy to the world because the Lord is come. As one of us, he came to be like us so that he might change us to be like him. Maybe you want things to be different in your life this new year, this 2023 You have been longing for meaning or you have been trying to fill that aching hole inside of your soul. You're searching. Maybe you find you are living this journey of life that is a mess all around you and maybe you want Christmas, this Christmas, to be different this year. The power of Christmas is yours all throughout the year, all throughout your life. All you have to do is accept it. The best Christmas gift was given to you over 2,000 years ago so that living life now in the future and in the future can be different. Hope can be yours. Peace can be yours. Love can be yours. Joy can be yours. The Lord is come. God is with us, even in the mess. And I would say especially in the mess. That's where we experience God the most. That's where we experience his love the most, is when we're in the mess of this life. God is with us. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for your love poured down upon us. Thank you that you are with us even in the mess of our lives We pray, God, that you would help us to see your joy, to experience your love and grace. Help us to be a ray of hope in this world around us. And may we experience your peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding. And may we carry these things into our new year and for the rest of our lives, accepting you as our Lord and our Savior. Jesus the Christ. And in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen.